The periodic table is one of the most useful things that we can have as a chemist. So if we know how to use the periodic table, it saves us having to learn a lot of things. So the periodic table has got this sort of general structure. We've got 18 columns in it, and these are called groups. So group 1, group 2, group 3, and so on. We ignore the 10 in the middle at year 12 level. Um, the electron configurations of those are a bit more complex, and we learn about those more in year 13. So we're going to focus on groups 1, 2, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And again, we ignore 18 a bit as well because it's not reactive. The elements in that group are unreactive, so not overly interesting at this stage um, of chemistry. So, the other thing we'll notice that's organised into is rows that go across. And they're not all the same. This one's only got two atoms, this one's only got 10, the next one's only got 10, and then they've got 18. These rows are called periods, hence the periodic table. It's organised into periods. The periods tell us how many electron shells or energy levels the electrons are arranged into. So if something is in the third period, it's going to have its electrons arranged in three electron shells. Two in the first, eight in the second, and up to eight in the third. When we look at a periodic table in more detail, we see that each element has got a symbol, its name, and a number. This number is called the atomic number. Now you might see another number, that's called the mass number, and we'll explore that more later. The atomic number is equivalent to the number of protons in the nucleus, so the number of positive charges. But because atoms are neutral, that also equals the number of electrons, so the number of negative charges orbiting or moving around the outside of the nucleus. And they are arranged in shells or energy levels. The first shallow energy level can take up to two electrons. So if I look at my example of chlorine here with its 17, the first two of those 17 electrons goes in the first shell. There's still 15 more electrons I have to place, so I put eight of those in the second shell. There's still room for more, so I... for seven more, sorry. So those seven more go in the third energy level, or third shell. And we actually find that chlorine is in the 1, 2, 3, third period. So we expect it to have 1, 2, 3 electron shells. It's in group 17, which is sometimes called group 7b. And so we expect it to have 7 valence electrons. Just look at another one very quickly. If I took sodium, which is number 11, which is about here, um, then again it's in the third period. It's number 11, so I expect it to have three energy levels. And I'll just jot that down. So sodium, we'd expect it as number 11, being placed about where the purple and the orange meet, to have three energy levels. It's got 11 protons, so it has 11 electrons. Two, eight, that still leaves one left. And there we go. So 2, 8, 1. There's our three energy levels for being in the third period. There's our 1 for it being in group 1. So the group tells us how many valence electrons or outside electrons each atom has got. Group 1, 1. Group 2, 2. We skip 3 up to 12. They are called transition metals and we'll look at those in year 13. So group, group 13, which has a 3 in it, has 3. 14, which has a 4 in it, has 4, and so on. And that is a nice, easy way to use our periodic table without having to remember all of this detail on how many electron shells something's got and how many valence electrons it also has. From that, we can infer or work out its valency, so how many chemical bonds it can make, and then we're starting to do some more interesting um, chemistry of structure and bonding.